good morning students i am dr arik sulukumar working in the school of mechanical engineering velur institute of technology chennai today we are going to see introduction to bolted joints a bolt and nut in combination is a fastening device used to hold two parts together so you can see this uh, schematic representation so you are having a bolt and a nut the bolt is having a head radius shank uh, run out thread you can see the thread length and the grip length and then uh, nominal length so all these are the parameters of the bolt so the body of the bolt that is called a shank is cylindrical in form the head is square or it can be hexagonal in shape is formed by forging a screw threads are cut on the other end of the shank so you can see now this is the shank actually it's in a cylindrical form and this one is the thread you can see that it is taken in the other end of the shank so these are the two types of uh, bolts one is hexagonal headed bolt another one is square headed bolt so you can see this it's a hexagonal and this one is the square head so you can see the schematic representation so all the dimensions they are mentioned based on the diameter so nuts in general are square or hexagonal in shape so you can see this is the schematic representation of that so f is uh, it's nothing but across face so sometimes they will uh, mark in the geometric right uh, ac that is across corner af means across face and the t is the thickness of the nut so the nuts with internal threads engage with the corresponding size of the external threads of the bolt however there are other forms of nuts used to suit specific requirements so for uh, better explanation so you can say this is the bolted joint which is having a part 1 and the another part that is part 2 these two are join use of bolt and nut so this is the bolt and this one is the nut so this is called as bolted joint so next one is washer a washer is a cylindrical piece of metal with a hole to receive the bolt so you can see now you can understand the what is washer so we have drawn in a screw jack so all the dimensions are given based on the diameter so it is used to give a perfect seating for the nut and to distribute the tightening force uniformly to the parts under the joint and another point is it also prevents the nut from damaging the metal surface under the joint so now you can see the schematic diagram so it is showing the assembly of a bolt nut and a was the was is given in the sectional view there is 0.15 d so this is an uh, external headed bolt with a nut and a washer in position so different forms of bolted one is uh, square headed bolt with square neck so you can see this uh, diagram and then you can understand what is square head headed bolt so this particular thing is square head neck that is square neck so it is provided with a square neck which fits into a corresponding square hole in the adjacent part preventing the rotation of the bolt so schematic diagrams are given and the actual photograph also given in this slide so next one is t headed bolt with square neck in this a square neck provided below the head prevents the rotation of the bolt so this is the T headed bolt with square neck so again you can see the square neck and you can see it is looking like a T that's only it is called, called as T headed bolt with square neck 
This type of bolt is used for fixing vices or pieces to the machine table having T slots. So we can see in our machine shop. So this is the actual uh, representation or photograph of a T headed bolt with square neck. So next one is hook bolt. This bolt passes through a hole in one part only while the other part is gripped by the hook shaped bolt head. So again I am repeating this bolt passes through a hole in one part only while the other part is gripped by the hook shaped bolt head. So you can see this diagram. So this particular portion is nothing but a hook. So it is used where there is no space for making a bolt hole in one of the parts. So this bolt passes through a hole in one part only. It's very important. While the other part is gripped by the hook shaped bolt head. And uh, very important next point is this bolt can be used where there is no space for making a bolt hole in one of the parts. The square neck prevents the rotation of the bolt. So in this all these bolts you can uh, now understand that the square neck is used to prevent the rotation of the bolt. So this is the actual diagram of a hook bolt. So next one is eye bolt. So in order to facilitate lifting of heavy machinery like electric generators, motors, turbines etc. Eye bolts are screwed on to their top surfaces. So in order to facilitate lifting of heavy machinery like electric generators, motors, turbines, eye bolts are screwed on to their top surfaces. So this one you can see uh, you would have come across in various places wherever uh, there's a heavy lifting uh, machineries. So this is the two dimensional uh, views of the eye bolt. For fitting an eye bolt, a tabbed hole is provided above the center of gravity of the machine. So very important point. So the tabbed hole should be provided above the center of gravity of the machine. So this is the actual uh, photograph of an eye bolt. So now you will understand for lifting heavy machineries, this thing is taped on the top surface of the machine and then they will lift, lift by using the cranes. So this is a screw header. Next one is stud bolt or it can be called as stud. It consists of cylindrical sang with threads cut on both the ends. So you can see the schematic diagram. So the A is a stud bolt or stud and the B is the assembly of two parts by using the stud bolt. This is the actual geometry of the stud bolt. And this is the threaded portion. So both the side it is threaded or both the ends it is having a thread cuts. So it is used where there is no place for accommodating the bolt head or when one of the parts to be joined is too thick to use an ordinary bolt. So again I will repeat I am repeating. It is used where there is no place for accommodating the bolt head or when one of the parts to be joined is too thick to use an ordinary bolt. In this uh, uh, PPT actually in the B diagram shows that in the second case when one of the parts to be joined is too thick to use an ordinary bolt. So you can see a plate and the main casting. So compared to the plate the main casting is uh, too thick. So this is the actual assembly view of uh, stud bolt with the two parts. The stud is first screwed into one of the two parts to be joined, usually the thicker one. So you can see the diagram. So here you can understand which one is the thick one that is main casting. The plate is having a lesser thickness. A stud driver in the form of a thick hexagonal nut with a blind threaded hole is used for the purpose. So after placing the second part over the stud, a nut is screwed on over the nut end. 
It is useful to provide in the second part a hole which is slightly larger than the stud nominal diameter. So this is the actual assembly of the stud bolt. Our stud. Different forms of nut. The first one we are going to see flange nut. This is a hexagonal nut with a collar or flange provided integral with it. So this is the representation, two dimensional representation. So all the dimensions are given with respect to the diameter of the hole. So this permits the use of a bolt in a comparatively large size hole. So this is the actual photograph of a flange nut. So now you can relate it. So next one is cap nut. It is a hexagonal nut with a cylindrical cap at the top. So this is the schematic representation of the cap nut. This design protects the end of the bolt from corrosion and also prevents leakage through the threads. So cap nuts are used in smoke boxes or locomotive and steam pipe connections. So this is the photograph of the cap nut. So whenever you need a bolt, it should be away from corrosion and prevents leakage, you have to use cap nut. So this is the cap. So next one is dome cap nut. So this is the representation of the dome cap nut in two dimensional. It is another form of a cap nut having a spherical dome at the top. This is the photograph of a dome cap nut. So this is the dome. Next one is capstone nut. This nut is cylindrical in shape with holes drilled laterally in the curved surface. So this is the schematic representation of capstone nut. A tommy bar may be used in the holes for turning the nut. Holes may also be drilled in the upper flat face of the nut. This is the actual photograph of a capstone nut. So this is the hole where you can uh, insert the tommy bar and you can tighten or loosen the nut. So next one is slotted or ring nut. This nut is in the form of a ring with slots in the curved surface running parallel to the axis. So you can see the schematic representation. A special C spanner is used to operate this nut. These nuts are used on large screws where the use of ordinary spanner is inconvenient. So most of the automobile industry they will use the slotted or ring nut. So this is the actual photograph of a ring nut. Most of the pipe joints and automobile industries we can see this kind of slotted or ring nut. This the, these are the slots. Next one is wing nut. This nut is used when frequent removal is required such as inspection covers, lids. So this is the 2D representation of the wing nut. It is operated by the thumb. So if I am showing the actual photograph you will understand much better. So this is the nut. So this kind of nut somewhere, sometimes here people will call it as a butterfly nut. Actually, the name is wing nut. So next we are moving to cap screws and machine screws. Cap screws and machine screws are similar in shape, differing only in their relative sizes. So machine screws are usually smaller in size compared to cap screws. So these are the screws, hexagonal head, flat head, round head, based on the head, uh, different types are there. So these are used for fastening two parts, one with clearance hole and the other with tapped hole. So you can see here uh, we are having cheese head 
and oval head socket head so the clearance of the unthreaded hole need not be shown on the drawing as its presence is obvious this particular statement you have to give importance the clearance of the unthreaded hole need not be shown on the drawing set screws these are used to prevent relative motion between two rotating parts such as the movement of pulley on soft for this a set screw is screwed into the pulley hub so that its end point bears firmly against the shaft so this is a schematic diagram of a set screw the fastening action is by friction between the screw and the shaft set screws are less efficient and so are used only for transmitting very light loads for longer life set screws are made of steel and cast iron further for better results the shaft surface is suitably machined for providing more grip eliminating any slipping tendency so this is the schematic representation and the actual photograph of a set screw with the assembly so different types of set screws for the so set screw sets based on that it is different types and crab screws are there and set screw ends are there so locking arrangements for nuts the bolted joints removable in nature are required to stay firm without becoming loose of their own accord however the joints used in the moving parts of a machinery may be subjected to vibrations this may slacken the joint leading to serious breakdown so to eliminate the slackening tendency different arrangements as discussed further are used to lock the nuts so lock nut this is the most commonly used locking device so this is a schematic representation of lock nut in this arrangement a second nut known as lock nut is used in combination with the standard nut so for better understanding this is the lock nut the thickness of a lock nut is usually 2/3 of the diameter where the d is the major diameter of the bolt the lock nut is usually placed below the standard nut so in the schematic diagram you can easily understand where the lock nut is placed to make the joint the lock nut is first screwed tightly and then the standard nut is tightened till it touches the lock nut so for the uh, for reference you can see the schematic diagram and the actual photograph afterwards the lock nut is then screwed back on the standard nut which is held by a spanner the threads of the two nuts become wedged between the threads of the bolt so by seeing the schematic diagram of b and c you can understand that the threads of the nuts become wedged between the threads of the bolt so particularly c you can understand the threads of the two nuts become wedged between the threads of the bolt so this is the lock nut so locking by split pin a split pin made of steel wire of semicircular cross section is used for locking the nut so this is the schematic representation the assembly the front end the top view in this arrangement the split pin is inserted through a hole in the bolt body and touching just the top surface of the nut then the ends of the pin are split open to prevent it from coming out while in use so by seeing the actual assembly you can understand what is locking by split pin so this is the split pin so locking by castle nut a castle nut is a hexagonal nut with a cylindrical collar turned on one end so this is a schematic diagram the front and top views threads are cut in the nut portion only and six rectangular slots are cut through the collar so this is the actual photograph a split pin is inserted through a hole in the bolt body after adjusting the nut 
such that the hole in the bolt body comes in line with slots. This arrangement is used in automobile works. So the photograph shows the arrangement which is used in the automobile industry. So this is the locking by castle nut. So the references for this lecture I used technical graphics communication by Gary and machine drawing by Narayana. Thank you guys. Please stay home. So meet you soon with another video. Thank you.